over to Zimbabwe now. The government over there has adopted its harshest solution yet to stop a currency crisis, ordering banks over the weekend to immediately stop all lending. Now, the country's president says that the move was designed to stop speculation against the Zimbabwean dollar, as he sees it. It's also part of a raft of measures to arrest the rapid devaluation of the currency on the parallel market. Zimbabwe reintroduced the local currency in February 2019 after abandoning it back in 2009 when it was savaged by hyperinflation. But that said, the Zimbabwean dollar, which is officially quoted at around 165, 165, 99 against the dollar, has continued to slide on the parallel market. It's trading in a between 330 to 400 to the greenback over there. Let's dig into the details of this policy and its implications. Farai Mukhtuya joins us now from Harare with more data um, on this developing story. So, Farai, bank representatives, as I understand it, met the central bank on Monday. What are the outcomes from that meeting? Well, Rama, what we've uh, seen since that uh, Monday meeting is Monday evening. The central bank uh, sent out a circular to all financial institutions giving more clarity uh, and further detail in terms of how this new directive will be operationalized. Uh, uh, and uh, indeed, we've seen that communication saying that, look, uh, this is a blanket ban, including individuals as well. They can't get any loans. And that if there were any deals that were in the pipeline, any financing arrangements, the central bank would be able to deal with those on a case by case basis. The banks themselves uh, remaining tight-lipped at this point in time. I spoke to uh, a director from the Association of Microfinance Institutions saying that, uh, you know, they're still digesting the contents of the directive as well as the communication from the central bank. Uh, earlier today, we saw one of the commercial banks sending out uh, uh, an analyst there giving a commentary on um, the measures and what the implications are in terms of the financial services sector. Later in the day, that bank retracted uh, that commentary, which uh, was quite critical of some of the measures, uh, and saying that it will comply with the directives that are coming through from the central bank. So clearly, uh, they are playing it safe at this point in time, not wanting to speak out, and I'm sure for fear of falling foul of the authorities. But I expect that in the coming days, as they get more detail on how all this will pan out, uh, we'll get more comment from them. Okay, so the banks are clearly keeping quiet, but what reactions are you getting from entrepreneurs and, and the Confederation of Industries in Zimbabwe, the biggest private sector body in the country? Well, Rama, I've spoken uh, to different uh, uh, small, medium uh, and large scale businesses. The sentiment I'm getting, first of all, is that, uh, you know, of complete uh, shock and surprise. Uh, I spoke to uh, a manufacturer who says, look, uh, they rely on overdraft facilities to manage their cash flows, uh, to keep operating, to stay in business. And he says, look, this situation will put them in a very, very tight spot and they're in a fix. The National Chamber of Commerce was, you know, very scathing in some of its uh, reactions uh, to these measures, uh, effectively saying where government is uh, blaming in large part speculators for the slide of the currency, the depreciation of the Zimbabwe dollar, that it is in fact the government expenditure on things like uh, road rehabilitation, on by-elections and things like that, which is uh, increased money supply. And that money is now being used to fuel the black market because uh, the suppliers that are being paid are looking for a store of value. It also says the suspension on uh, bank lending essentially says a wrong signal uh, to investors. It it uh, deals a heavy blow to Zimbabwe's open for business uh, mantra uh, and that, uh, you know, effectively things will become very difficult for businesses to operate in this country. So uh, people are, you know, I think very surprised, but also, uh, you know, worried about what the implications of all this might be. Indeed. Uh, just, just a point of clarification here, because as you mentioned earlier, the directive effectively stops all kinds of lending, right? Medium term loans, long term loans, um, overdrafts, that's all essentially down. But does it also by implication stop banks from lending to government when they go into the market and buy treasury bills? Well, yes, um, the, the, the uh, circular that came through from the central bank clarified that whether they are government entities, government institutions, government departments, private individuals who had also not put, you know, not been initially mentioned uh, by the president over the weekend, all of those, uh, you know, people are um, can't borrow, that there will be no money or funds extended to them. So it is a blanket ban uh, at this point in time. Okay, so walk us through the rationale behind another part of the president's order over the weekend, not to process any foreign country payments, because at face value, it seems like it also prevents firms in the country from being able to pay their foreign suppliers.
Well, I think what, what the president was alluding to was the third party payments where effectively some people are alleged to be raising invoices and saying, look, um, I, I can't pay uh, directly to a supplier for various reasons, whether it is, uh, you know, some of these sanctions and restrictive measures that Zimbabwe is under. Uh, and so saying I will pay a supplier X who will then eventually pay supplier Y. And then what then happens is that uh, the third party through which this payment is being done is putting a markup on that. And then when they eventually pay the final you know, invoice, uh, uh, it is less the amount that has been generated. And uh, effectively saying that that is a way in which one of the loopholes uh, through which funds are leaving the country, that the economy is being bled of foreign currency. And so if any payments are to be made, they'll be direct uh, to the country of origin where that business is operating and no longer through these uh, third party payments that we've been seeing and invoices that are being raised for third parties and not the direct suppliers. All right. Um, inflation in Zimbabwe in April was around 96 percent. The policy rate of the RBZ, I believe, is around 80 percent at the moment. And agriculture is one of the big recipient of loans in Zimbabwe. So when the president wakes up and says, I'm going to cut lending across the sector, it's a blanket ban, as you pointed out. Isn't the president just pushing inflation higher and higher? Well, indeed, I think uh, certainly what we've, uh, the sentiment we've heard, I, I, I made mention of the National Chamber of Commerce earlier, uh, and what they are saying is this will give rise to a parallel uh, sort of financing, um, uh, you know, platform where uh, people may end up going to loan shocks because farmers need to put crop into the ground. And, you know, this measure comes at a time when many farmers are trying or getting prepared for the winter wheat cropping season, which is very crucial and strategic at this point in time. First of all, because, you know, last year Zimbabwe had a record uh, output of wheat and was looking to, uh, you know, consolidate that uh, to do even better this year uh, and also to try and mitigate uh, the shocks that are being felt due to the tensions between Russia and Ukraine. And, and so farmers who are in that position, who've got the inputs or who are needing to get inputs to put, uh, you know, seed into the ground, not just in wheat, but across the board, uh, you know, will need to find money from somewhere. And that gives rise, uh, as you're quite rightly saying, to some parallel structures. But I think also the sentiment uh, and the hope that I've heard from some people here is that uh, you know this may have been a measure just to uh, try and cut off this sort of uh, irresponsible behavior in the short term and that it's a very temporary measure that in the next few days we'll see it being uh, reversed or certainly reprieve being given to some sectors as you mentioned crucial sectors like agriculture who may be allowed to come up with some sort of facility and arrangement to allow them to access funding again so the hope is that uh, it's very temporary or that very soon we'll start to see some sort of uh, very crucial and productive sectors being accommodated and being given some relief.